So we're going to call the meeting to order. Um, if everybody would stand and um, do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We're going to do roll call. Yes. Please. Mr. Denise? Here. Mr. Renzi? Present. Ms. White? Here. Ms. Webster? Here. Mr. Sims? Here. And Mr. Agadello? Here. Thank you. So next is announcements, but I don't have any. So we have agenda modifications. Um, We'll let everyone know that the, the meeting date on the agenda is incorrect. It says October 28th. It should read November 25th um, for next month's meeting. And if anybody wanted to, because it is no, it's Thanksgiving week, if anybody wanted to discuss mm -hmm. moving it to the 18th, we could do that. I'm or is the 25th fine? It. I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it as well. 25th it is. All right, so we're going to move on to approve the minutes from September 23rd. If everybody had a chance to review them, mm -hmm. um, somebody wants to make a motion? I'll make a motion that if there's no correction, that the minutes be approved as written. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We don't have any unfinished business either. Wow. <laughs> Anybody here for public input? No? Wow. Okay, with no public input, we're going to move to new business. <coughs> Mr. Benton. So item A under new business is review and consider the 2020 committee meeting calendar. Uh, presented before you is the proposed 2020 meeting calendar for everyone to review. And if you are uh, so pleased to vote on tonight, a couple of dates that will differ from our normal fourth Monday of the month are May 18th. It's a week early just due to Memorial Day. Um, October, there is no meeting scheduled due to early voting in council chambers. November 16th, uh, I moved that meeting uh, for one due to Thanksgiving week and then also to kind of evenly spread the meetings out a little bit uh, because also you'll see the December meeting is moved up to the 14th as well. Uh, just due to the holidays to move it up a little bit. So that basically would leave us with no meeting in October and then a meeting in the middle of November and a meeting in the middle of December to kind of even them out a little bit. So uh, that's the proposed meeting calendar. If anyone has any issues with dates or questions on that, we can have that discussion or you all can, it's up to you to, to vote on it tonight if you'd like. Um, the dates look fine to me. We do, it is that if there's not anything that we really need to address, the meetings could be canceled then. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Anybody have any issues with the Nope. Dates? Do we need to vote on that or not? Okay. Well, if somebody wants to make a motion to I accept these dates. I move that we accept the uh, calendar dates for our meetings. <clears throat> from January until the next December. I, I second. Anybody in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So bad and cages at Barber Street Complex. Yes, yeah, so um, at the recommendation of the board at the last meeting, it was brought up uh, to look into the bad and cages at the Barber Street uh, com Baseball Complex. And so I've been looking at options for bad and cages we're looking at roughly about $2,000 per batting cage to replace it with netting. Uh, it's just due to the price of the netting. And the netting that um, I, I'm, I would like to go with has a couple has double knotting and it's a stronger uh, netting that should last us for quite a few years. Uh, we would suspend them from the existing poles that are in place and uh, should give us a pretty nice looking batting cage there on site. Um, so that would total $4,000 for the netting and um, the, only, the only item that we need to really look at, and, and I've got two meetings tomorrow with fence contractors um, on a different item, but I'm gonna give them the, have them give me a quote to extend the fence from the dugout down past the batting cage. And the reason for that being is because now the batting cages are currently chain link fencing. So if a ball is hit off the bat, pulled foul, 
um, and from either field three or field four. It is the chain link fencing and it, goes, it doesn't cause any damage. However, if we go with the netting system and a ball is hit and it hits into the net, it's going to um, you know, deflect the net a little bit. And the kid, if someone happens to be picking up a ball up against the net as they're cleaning up or something like that, we want to prevent that issue from happening. So we would need to install a, just a chain link fence down from the, batting, from the dugout past the batting cages um, just to kind of enclose that space a little bit. So I'm going to get some quotes tomorrow on that pricing. Um, I'm looking at a total not to exceed price in the six to $8,000 price range for this batting cage renovation. Um, that is not including a new surface on the, on the bottom or anything. It's just taking the existing concrete that's there and then removing the chain link fence and installing two um, net systems within it and then extending the chain link fence um, down the sides of it would be my solution uh, going forward and, and that's the cost. So it's up to you all to have that discussion as to whether you want to look. It is, con it is a park improvement. It would be improving, so it, it is possible to expand a, por you know, a portion out of the $20,000 park allocation for park improvements that the committee has. Yes. So the chain link will be gone? That, that the cage of the... the yes, ma'am. So, so if we go this route, it would, we would remove the existing chain link fencing that's there. Um, in looking at it, quite a bit of it needs to be removed already. It needs to be replaced. It's, it's old. Um, so regardless of which way we want to go, if we want to just replace the chain link fencing, if you just look around, the majority of, of batting cages systems now are with the net. Um, it's just, you know, the balls can hit into them. It gives a little bit of flex, and it doesn't ricochet off of the chain. I've just, I've never seen There's one. Hmm. Unbelievable, but I've never seen one that's just net. So is there a frame or something? Yeah, so what you have is the existing chain link fencing. We have um, a metal, metal poles that go all the way around in a, in a U shape um, that we would suspend the netting from that and we would keep those poles in place. Okay, that's interesting. And how many cages are there, two? two. So there currently are two. Um, I have met with the baseball board to look into their recommendations on this as well. I went to their last board meeting, um, just trying to keep them in the loop of what's taking place. And we did, I did have the discussion about looking to possibly converting it into four separate cages, because if we go with the chain link fencing, we would have an area for a little bit of a walk around to the other end of the cages. So we could look to do a couple drop down nets in the middle and possibly make it into four nets. Um, what we'd have to do is we'd have to go with a, a higher level netting to do the drop down to prevent any overlapping um, of the balls that are hit. But it's done in other places. I was gonna get some measurements um, at some of the batting cages that I go to frequently with my son and, and uh, see exactly what their dimensions are. We've got 70 feet to work with on a length um, basis for those cages, which is pretty long. So I'm thinking we're pretty safe going 35 feet on either side if we were to convert them into four cages. Um, we could do a couple different options. We could keep, you know, two longer cages and convert just smaller areas on the end to do some soft toss work or some T work at the ends, or we could convert them into four um, all the same size batting cages. So we have a couple options we can look at, and that's what I discussed with the baseball little league board. Um, we could go two full size cages and then take ends um, on both sides and turn them into soft toss or, or tea like stations that. as well. Mm -hmm. I like that because I was, I was there when it was when we had 500 kids playing, you know, or, or close to it had 42 teams at one time. Um, and there wasn't a problem with the batting cages, you know, usage. So I think um, I think two is good, but having that extra on the end would be really and the public Excellent. can use those when they're not practicing, the teams aren't practicing, right? That is correct. Okay. The cages are open to the public when they're not in use by the Little League program. Okay. Can I ask a question? Uh, I'm not familiar with the, uh, these particular cages. Are they used for pitching and for hitting, or are they just for hitting the batting cages? Yes, sir. So they are on, they're just used for hitting. They're batting cages. We do not have any portable mounds or anything like that in Nothing place like inside that, of yeah. those. And uh, if I may ask, has, uh, have there been any suggestions or proposals brought up uh, recently about the concrete surface at all? So when we were discussing it at the Little League board meeting, um, I did ask them to remove the current existing uh, surface that is in place. 
Uh, that surface is not really made to be used outdoors in the batting cage. Uh, I, I've asked them to look into purchasing a turf surface that would go in there through the Little League board, purchase that, um, and go down with the turf surface that would, one, you know, be a little bit safer, and they could do some ground ball drills and stuff like that in the cages as well. Um, and two, it would kind of save a little bit on the baseballs mm -hmm. with hitting the concrete surface. For now, the, the plan is to have that surface removed and just stay with concrete until they get the funds or until they can, they can allocate that to purchase that turf surface underneath. What does something like that cost? I don't have the pricing on a turf surface. I would, you know, uh, just throw out a number. It's probably two to four thousand dollars for something like that. Um, but that's just me throwing out a number on, on based on my knowledge and what I know. So, what are we looking at for a total then? For it would be four thousand to replace <coughs> the netting, right? Yes, ma'am. And then you were talking about another fencing in the back. Yeah. So, uh, so I would say, you know, if you all are looking at a number, I would say a not to exceed is eight thousand dollars. I'll have a better idea tomorrow and I can share it via email once I get some quotes uh, or give me a couple of days, I'm meeting with them tomorrow to get quotes to run the chain link fencing, extend the chain link fencing down a little ways. Um, it would only have to be extended about 80, 85 feet down, down the way. So I'm thinking, you know, a pretty safe amount is, you know, the netting and all the accessories that we have to get for that, shipping cost, everything with that, and then installation of the fencing. We're looking at about $8,000 is, is what I'm thinking. And because it's a community park, then all the other zones are contributing to that's, that? That's correct. It okay. would come out of uh, each of the four zones okay. would have an equal amount deducted okay. from the, from the $5,000 in each zone. Okay. Brian, just a question uh, from children's uh, safety point of view. Uh, I know kids like to congregate sometimes behind the batting cages. Would that be a problem with a ball coming into the netting as opposed to a chain link fence? No, sir, it would not be. Um, I can safely say I, I, I've hit in batting cages all my life and I, and I take my son to them. Everywhere is pretty much going, has the net uh -huh. um, system in place. Uh, there, the entryways are, are a little cut. There are two ways you can get into the net system. Um, with them, there's either a little slit that, that you have a safety net in between, so you would walk in and you still would have another net before you, that you would walk around before you get to the batting area, or you would they have it where you, can, you just lift it up and get into the safety of the net system and then you start hitting. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there's not really any concerns of anything okay. coming outside of the net with the exception of if there happen to be holes in the future in the net. That's why I like the idea of you putting the, extending the fence down on, on both uh, field three and four because kids are always hanging out. So that would be excellent. Uh, it's a good idea. Yeah. yeah, and that would give them also, you know, I, I got to look and see exactly how much room we have. Um, but that was kind of my idea whenever I, I sat back and thought, thought about it, turning it into either four cages or – two normal size cages and then having the hitting stations on the other end is they still would be able to have the walk around. They could walk around and enter from the other end of the cage and do it safely um, for, for the hitting and stations. Thank you. Yeah, so at, at this time, it's, it's completely up to the board. Like I said, I, I've done that research. I'm, I'm you know, comfortable with about an $8,000 number for not to exceed for this project. If it's something that the board feels, you know, mm -hmm. or you want to wait until, you know, another month or you know, when I have the hard numbers, we can do that as well. It's completely up to you all, but it is something that we could use the allocated park improvement money for with this project. I think it's a great idea, and I'm, I'm all for it. Um, and so spring you, comes up pretty quick yeah. when they so, start playing. So would you need a motion from us to, for this? Yes, or? so if, if you're gonna, if you want to, to expend the money on this, and, and I, that's why I'm kind of throwing out the not to exceed number of $8,000, then you all could make a motion um, not to exceed $8,000 to spend on this batting cage project. And then I would report back at the next meeting, the project's probably not gonna be complete by the November meeting, um, but I would report back on the hard factual numbers so you would know that, but you would have already made a motion that I can move forward on purchasing the netting and working on getting a purchase order and things like that made for the fence for the fence company. Okay. So if, if there's no further question, I'd like to make a motion so, that uh, we go with the not to exceed $8,000 fee or figure for the, uh, the baseball improvement. 
project at Barber Street Park. And I'll second that motion. <laughs> Everybody second. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Everybody approved. Nobody's opposed. So, right back to you, staff, uh, current project update. Yes, so uh, staff matters, uh, current projects update, which I try to give to you at each one of our meetings. Um, the first one I'm going to update you on is the dog park shade structures. That was a carryover from last fiscal year. Uh, that was budgeted in, la in last year's fiscal 2018-2019 uh, budget. And uh, the concrete pads have been installed. Uh, they were installed last week. We had um, t uh, city staff went in and, and did some grading and installed some sod around uh, all of the concrete pads. So we do have those areas still fenced off. We're trying to get the sod to take. The rain this week de weekend definitely helped us with that. Um, but we're going to give it a few weeks before we open those areas back up. Uh, for the dogs and the general public to use. It's not preventing anyone from using the dog park. It's just cutting out a small sections that we have where the, the pads are installed. And I just want to make sure that side takes before we, you know, let the dogs start digging and everything in those areas. Um, we're currently at about five to six weeks away from the shade structures being delivered and installed. Uh, that is something uh, the, comp the manufacturing company would not do the con would not manufacture the units and set us a date for delivery until I could send them a picture of the concrete pads. So, um, so I sent them the picture last week once the pads were installed. So we're now on their schedule, um, and as soon as they get manufactured, then they'll they'll give us an installation date. Do those stay up during hurricanes, or they come <clears throat> down? They will they will stay up. Um, they are built to to the current Florida code standards. Uh, we have to go through the building department to do a building permit, and uh, they are, you know, signed, engineered, stamped uh, to meet Florida wind load code for those these units. Okay. Um, they're not your, they're not the the fabric shade structures like you see we have at Barber Street at Creative Playground. They're not those. These are a metal frame. Um, <clears throat> they're considered Carolina Carports is the comp manufacturing company, uh, so they will be anchored into the concrete and we were required to do 12 by 12 footers on the sides for those. Is that similar to what's at the splash pad? Uh, no, they're, so what used to be at the splash pad was the fa fabric um, shade canopies that we, you know, that are known everywhere. They took those out and they put um, solar energy wind, wind panels over at the splash pad. Uh, these structures, we do not currently have any within the city. This is the same structure that we're looking to put at pickleball as well. Um, but they will go into the dog park hopefully in five to six weeks. They're, they're relatively large. I mean, one's 18 by 31 feet and the other one's 18 by 21 feet just because we had to go a little bit smaller in the dog, dog, the small dog area uh, just due to the width of it. So, um, but we'll, you know, they should provide plenty of shade. We're going to purchase new picnic tables to put in there and uh, they should be happy over there. They'll be happy. <clears throat> Um, moving on to park signage, uh, I've been mentioning this for a while now because we've kind of gone through the whole process with the consultant, but the bid opening for this project is this coming Friday. So as soon as we have the bid opening, you know, based on if we get some you know, responsible bids and, and we can move forward with this, then hopefully we can get this project rolling and really start to get some of these signs replaced. It's all going to come down to what the final numbers come in on the bid on per sign as to how many we can get done this year and then how many we have to kind of push off for future years. We have budgeted money for this year. We have budgeted 25000 for the next couple of years as well. <coughs> um, it's all going to come. Once we have the numbers for the bid, then we can start to adjust those numbers in future years if we have to. So this money then does come out of park and rec <coughs> funds then? How does that work? That's correct. The uh, park signage money does come out of recreation impact fee. Does the money come then from each zone for their signs? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so what will happen with this, and I, I'll just double check with finance on how this happens. I, I believe if it's a community park, it comes out of each zone. Right. If it's not, it's coming out of its specific okay. zone um, for that portion of the funds. Okay. Um, now the project everyone's been waiting on, pickleball, or most people have been waiting on. It's been a, a long, long <coughs> project. Um, it's, finally, it's moving along and you can see the progress as you drive by if you've gone out there lately. Um, the asphalt's down, the courts are in place, they've um, cut out the holes where the, the net posts are going, the fencing is up all the way around the courts. Uh, at this time we're just waiting for the asphalt to cure. 
There's still plenty of work to be done out there. Um, we did go ahead and install the electrical conduit for the park lighting. So that, that bid project, I think that bid opening is in, a, in two weeks. Um, so we're moving along with that as well. So once we open that one, then we can proceed with planning to have the lights installed for those courts. Um, and right now the building, the restroom building is planned to be delivered next week sometime. Today they were dig digging to install the lift station, uh, concrete sidewalks, concrete entryway, all that work still continuing to happen this week. So if you go by at any time next couple weeks, you'll still see work happening. <coughs> Uh, and we're just we're, we're moving forward towards you know a completion date of somewhere in the middle of December is where we're currently looking at um, and, and a lot of it has to do with the 30-day hold we have on the courts um, that the asphalt has to cure before we can install the uh, acrylic surface um, is the restroom then a prototype of what's at the dog park and down on the river so it will be more like it's the same company that did the one at the splash pad um, it's a little bit smaller than the one at the splash pad. It, this one only has um, one restroom unit, you know, a men's and a women's, but it's just one unit. It's one person can go in at a time. Um, so it is, it's about nine feet by 17 feet. So it's a relatively small building, um, but it is, it is a modular that comes prefab and they'll, they'll take it off with a crane and just drop it into place. So we have the plumbing and the electrical stub ups are all already in place. And uh, the building will just kind of drop right down with the holes and, and sit right on top of it. So hopefully it's all matching up. <clears throat> um, baseball field projects. As I mentioned earlier, I met with the Little League board. I think it was either last Thursday or the Thursday before. Uh, so one, in the last two weeks to discuss. Uh, we got quite a few baseball projects that are taking place. Um, you know, on top of us, you know, working with the turf out there, it's not just baseball, we're doing turf work, we're doing it also on the multi-purpose fields, football fields, all of that. So all of those fields are getting turf work done to them. Um, uh, staff is doing a great job of maintaining that program. They're continuing to kind of tweak it and, and starting to address um, s specific grasses now. We're at that point where we've kind of pushed the weeds out, we've controlled you know, the, pe the pest and everything on the field. So we're at the point now where we can start to try to attack some grasses that we don't want out there and try to continue to get the Bermuda grass to take over. Um, but so I met with the board and, and kind of gave them an update on that. And I also wanted their input a little bit since they are the ones that are out there and they're the ones that are gonna have to live with whatever, you know, these expansions and the, the updates that we're doing to these fields. So, um, we discussed the timeline. Uh, I'm meeting with two fence companies tomorrow, and a third one was supposed to be tomorrow, but we pushed it, it got pushed to next Tuesday um, to get quotes for replacement of the fencing uh, for the Little League fields. So once we get those quotes in, we'll go ahead and, and, and move forward with getting a purchase order done for those, and it'll probably more than likely have to go before council in the November meeting for approval. Once that happens, I'm pushing the, the fence work to be done over the holidays um, or during December when literally kind of takes a little bit of a break before they really jump into it in, in the latter part of January. So we'll have, you know, a good six, possibly eight weeks that we can get that project done. And I feel confident um, in working with the fence companies as we get these quotes that we can get that fence work done prior to the spring baseball season. You're replacing all the fences? <clears throat> so we're going to basically replace from the dugouts on the little league fields all the way around the outfields and back to the duck to the dugout in those areas for we're starting with little league this year um and then we also will replace the the yellow fence topper that goes on the top so and my the reason tomorrow i'm meeting with the fence companies and i want them to to bury the fencing a little bit if you go out there now and you kind of see where if they laid oh. a, laid a fence on top you get it starting to curl up and and things like that and then it'll also be kind of, uh, you know, a thing that we have to address with Little League to make sure not hitting balls into the fencing. That's and, why and I think in the things. batting cages, if you have the soft toss at the end, that would be really good. Exactly. So, uh, so those will be all things that we work, look at on that. Um, I also asked the Little League board for their input on the dugout project. That's going to be something that we're starting to move into um, as some other projects are starting to drop off the list now. With being complete, I can, I can start to really look into the dugouts. They gave me input. I'm still collecting input. If anyone has input on, on the dugouts going forward. Um, and then we'll go into a design phase and that's a project we're looking like more in the summertime. 
so we have we have quite a while it's not like we're going to push it off until that time but we're just kind of delaying it a little bit right now and then we'll get into the design and then we'll be ready to roll once we get into the summer to get those dugouts worked on and see how far um, th that those funds allocated will take us on that project um, they did ask um, that I look into installing warning tracks which has been an item that that I have I've kind of brought up a couple of times and I know I think Luis might have brought it up at one of the earlier meetings um, so we're, we're gonna look into that you know as far as warning tracks go out there on those fields as well uh, that'll be a project that we look at here in the winter if we can it, depending on the funds funds available within our current budget um, we may start with one field or two fields something like that and, and kind of progress into getting these warning tracks installed in, into all four fields as we we continue to go forward um, on that one so any questions on the baseball projects yes I got one question it, and it probably don't pertain to um, what, what's happening right now but it's something like more along a safety matter and I was like uh, wondering has the city ever thought about uh, since it since Florida has a lot of lightning as far as one of those lightning detectors that goes on top of like um, one of the buildings because I know when I was at one of the parks in St. Lucie County over the weekend I saw they had a lightning detector and I think one of the companies is called Thor and they detect lightning from a long distance away. Yeah, so, so have the I city have, ever thought about I have, that? I have pretty good experience with ThorGuard. Um, when yes. I was at Jupiter, they were the, the company that we use with. Uh, and ThorGuard's a little bit more interesting because they're a lightning prediction program. So they read the electro electrostatic charge ab ab above the fields and in a spe specified area, where some of the other ones are lightning detection. So, you know, that's kind of a, a difference when you go from prediction to detection, because detection means a lightning has to strike somewhere in order for it to, to detect it, yes. um, where that first strike could be. So ThorGuard is, you know, ahead of the game a little bit in, in that program. What I can do is I can get a price um, to do it. I know what we could look at with that is we could have a home base system that's either located at the football building or at the baseball building. Yes. And then we could have a satellite with, with, that would have a horn and a light at the at the other building mm -hmm. so that then it would just transmit the signal across um, that the, the park and the buildings are separated it's in such close proximity that we could have buy one unit and then just get a satellite unit that would would work for both both areas yes because so I only mentioned it because I know that um, that the fields there are heavily used and you mentioned something about looking at trying to have a completion of something by the fall by the spring so I was just thinking about maybe I, this I mean, if, if there are funds and, and uh, maybe, like you said, again, it would, it would come from, because that would be an improvement for safety and we had the park one. as a whole. We had we one up there. there. So you had yeah. one? Yeah, we had one that, that the league got. Yeah, but it's, the, but it's a it's not, it's not a very, not, it's like not a, the handheld. handheld. Not, it's not the handheld one. It, it's, it was there anyway. I don't know. Yes, I know but it, it wasn't handheld. That's because the handhelds. Um, but it wasn't working right. So okay. I don't know what happened. We, we uh, from clam bake money. Mm -hmm. That's what we got with, with plan big money. Okay, so I'll do the research on the Thorguard system, yes. and I'll, I'll bring that back at the next meeting. Um, and it's something I can we can also discuss with football and baseball and um, programs as well to see, uh, you know, if they have funds to put towards it. Now we can go forward because currently it's, it's none in the city. I mean, I know the city is kind of a small entity, but like uh, that thing would encompass because uh, the sound it goes like. Uh, it goes far. I mean, yeah, I mean, like I said, with the satellite location, you would basically, you'd have the main unit on one of the areas, which would be plenty loud for those, mm -hmm. that area. And then you'd have the satellite location, which would have a horn and a light. Um, so they, they both, the light basically works to where if the light's flashing, it means the, the program is activated. Yes. Um, and then you get th the, the l one long horn means it's activated, and then the three short horns means you can go back out and play. Um, so I can definitely look into that system and, and see what the cost would be to have it installed and, and get you a price back for that as well. Okay. Would it be something we want to look at even for tennis or pickleball courts or not? <clears throat> so the one thing I would caution a little bit is locations. I mean, even Barber Street, it's going to be one, you know, it'll be pushing it a little bit. The horn's really loud. Mm -hmm. um, but we can set parameters on the hours that the horn goes off. So we can set it not to go off any later than 10 p.m or any later than 9.30 p.m. or any earlier than 8 a.m. So we can set those parameters. Um, we can look, I, I think you're gonna find, and I, I don't 
want to throw a number out there, but it's going to be pretty substantial. I, like I said, I have a little bit of a history with Thorgard. You're going to be looking five to ten thousand dollar range um, for this system. That's a pretty safe estimate um, on this. So it would be a pretty big cost to do it in in all of the active parks. I think maybe we we take one and and start there and then go from yes. there with with how we do it across the mm -hmm. other parks. I think that's a great idea because you can't put a price on it. Because we know, I mean, I was here many, many years ago, and lightning just came from nowhere, and it, and it struck a, a, I mean, a teacher back then. It was a teacher, and it was, I mean, it was a real was nice. It was a nice day, and the person was at Hobart Park many mm -hmm. years ago, and the lightning just came from nowhere. And we know, like, our technology has advanced a great deal, and now Thor's art. I know the county has several, but like I don't think it's. I know the North County Pool has one, but you cannot hear it from that distance to this area. So yeah. I really do appreciate you for thinking about it because I know. Yes, absolutely. Anyway. I I'd like to make a comment on that too. I think that you really need to research that. I mean, Florida being the <laughs> capital of light, it just seems like, uh, quite frankly, we'd be liable and then. In the last, well, almost 40 years in Sebastian, I've had two incidents, one at the high school, another one uh, running a tournament at the golf course, where that thing it went off. Both times people gave me a hard time about because I wouldn't let them out. And both time, in both times, well, one time a tree was hit uh, the next day, nobody argued when they looked at the tree uh, that was at a tournament. The one at the high school, when that, that happened, I wouldn't let people get out of the cars to leave their kids, and we had a teacher get killed. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I think the tennis courts, I mean, I do have a bias being in tennis all my life, I, I admit it. Uh, but. Uh, you know, I I think the city is just uh, hard to sit there and, and justify why we don't have it. I, I know the problems are setting the time parameters when there's a start in the morning and then you have to make sure nobody's on the courts to then or nobody's on the football field to then. I, I know there's problems there, but I think we have to do a little more uh, research on that. I agree. We and we had we had at the baseball field. We had the, the lightning detector, but I mean you can be a lightning detector yourself out there and see it, and they still don't want to come off the field. You know, just like your people, and they give you so much grief grief about it. So I think when you have a detector or something like that that says what you have to do, it's got the rules. It's a benefit. A benefit, yes. benefit all of us. But as a coach. It's a life. I mean, it's, it's no game is more important than a life. So, I mean, I, I see it all the time while I'm out there. I mean, I don't have to be a coach to see it, but I know if my child participate as a parent, I would supersede that coach because, I mean, like Florida happens all the time, I mean, yeah. especially on those beaches out there. So, I mean, yes, what you're saying, Joanne, is real true. But I think, like I said again, the, sometimes the coaches err on the wrong side because it's not mm -hmm. all about winning all the time. It's about yeah. a child's safety. Yeah, so I'll do the research, I'll look into it, and I'll bring you guys back something um, in the, at the November meeting. Thank you. Um, moving on to the, my, the next uh, project, the uh, Friendship Hartrue Tennis Courts. Um, I've received two bids and waiting on a third one to come, back, come in. Uh, once, once I receive this, I'll go for council approval to move forward on that project. Um, and that's something that hopefully, you know, as long as I can get it on November, council agenda item and we can possibly do it also over the the holiday break um, when times are a little bit slower back at the courts before they really get started into their season if we met that miss that time span it'll be another summertime project uh, that we just push it back to but uh, one of those two options will work <clears throat> garden club um, I know this has been brought up by Ms. White, and I know Ms. Webster, you received an email as well, um, and I'm not sure if any of the other board members received it, but this park is gonna be one of our projects as we progress into the season in which we, we kind of handle our special projects. Once the grass kind of slows down a little bit, we can get a better handle on, on maintenance, then we can go out and start doing some special projects, trimming trees, clearing up some pathways and stuff like that. Um, so I've spoken with Ms. White on a couple occasions, and, we'll, and I'm going to plan to include her as we begin to address some concerns with this park. And uh, we have had a discussion about looking at a walking trail around the park. 
Um, I've spoken with the stormwater, stormwater department. We're going to look to sometime in the future uh, budget funds to look at dredging that, that pond as well and uh, go forward with that for Garden Club. Um, all other projects have kind of been planned out throughout. We're plan still planning throughout the year. Uh, we've got quite a bit going on right now. It's taking a lot of time. Um, but if you, if you have any questions on any of this year's projects or, or capital purchases, you can ask them now um, if, you, if you're looking for any updates or feel free to reach out to me, call me, uh, send me an email and I'll, I'll give you as, as much of an update as I can give you at that time um, with any of these projects. So with that, if you have any questions, you can ask them now. Is that Actually, all you have? <laughs> Actually, uh, as far as the dugout improvements go, I know this is a difficult thing to kind of manage, but because there's signs that say it's not they're not lightning safe structures and we've been talking about lightning for a little bit now. So maybe in the improvements, if I could propose looking into materials that'll be less lightning conductive or conducive just to make them a little bit safer in those few minutes before everybody gets to their cars, if they happen to still be in the dugouts. Yeah, I, I can look into it. I, I don't think I still don't think it's a, a reasonable option to ask people to do that. I, I think we need to spread the word that as soon as the horn goes off, mm -hmm. you need to get to a safe place, which is more than likely your car. Mm -hmm. um, but we ca I can look and see if there's anything out there that'll help us out with that. I just think it's going to be hard to kind of mm -hmm. stay away from the chain link fence and and those <coughs> those those things that are prevalent in in, in dugouts. Um, that I, I don't I think we have a hard time getting away from mm -hmm. getting away from those but I'll look into it yeah. anybody else no Our board opening yes so we still um, have an alternate board position that's available so if you happen to know anyone that's looking to do something with their free time uh, please you know give them the advice to apply for the position and um, you know, then it would just go through the proper channels to see if they get approved to join the board. All right, so we have uh, committee members updating your parks or if you have anything to bring. Mr. Denise, let's start. With you. No, I would just uh, appreciate you thinking everybody that works for you after spending six weeks in Connecticut coming home and seeing uh, the work that I had to do on my property to uh, get it back to normal. It was nice driving to Sebastian and seeing our parks and everything. And uh, uh, just thank everybody. It's, it's a pleasure coming back home. Mr. Renzi? Uh, no, I have nothing to report on the parks, but I do have a question about the uh, the uh, opening that we have on the uh, board here. I have a friend that uh, is on the uh, planning board. Would that be a conflict? Yes, so the, the city does have a code um, in place that does not allow members to be on multiple boards. Okay. So we can only be on one board. He asked me about that and I told him I'd ask you. Okay, I'm all done. Ms. Wait, um, I think I brought up last time um, in the future, uh, looking at sidewalks in the city. Um, the one I'm thinking of now mainly is the one on Fleming running into Main Street, and then maybe over in Schumann area and that. So I just think in the years to come, prioritizing maybe where we can do um, some s extending sidewalks or upgrading some of them. Um, I don't know, I'm thinking some streets are probably gonna be widened in the next few years just because of the amount of traffic, so that would have to delay putting sidewalks or upgrading in there, but I just think it's something we need to look at in, in the future. Yes, and I'll, I'll apologize. I did look into that issue and I failed to follow through with you on that one um, and bring it up at tonight's meeting, but uh, so sidewalks is gonna fall underneath our roads department. Um, unless it happens to be within one of our parks. Um, so the one from Fleming to Main Street, I'll give you a call tomorrow um, and we can discuss it. I've I just got a reference back to the emails that went back and forth mm -hmm. on exactly what the, the discussion was on that one. And then um, I'll, I'll give you a call tomorrow and, and discuss that, but I apologize for- Who does the tree trimming on the sidewalks on 512? Is that the county? 
Yeah, so the sidewalks on 512 are county. Okay, because some of those need to be cut back, the um, bushes on riding, uh, especially I'm thinking on the south side on some of those, on 512 in town, just okay. cutting back the brush in there, so maybe they would do that. Um, and then the other thing was um, also in the future, um, I know we talked about um, trees and in the parks, having someone, you know, looking through and doing tree trimming, health of some of the trees, maybe planting more, taking some out. And there was a consultant. It, I don't know if that's something that she's a full-time person that could be helping with that. I, she did the river in the river park. Yeah, so we did have a consultant come in and help us with Riverview Park Master Plan, mm -hmm. which that, that will be coming before you all after we get out there the first of the year and present it to council and, and that stuff. Um, as far as within our parks, th this is the time of year that we'll be looking to trim trees and start to do some of those things because we have the staff to do it now. It's just really hard to do a lot of it over the summer. I'm not making an excuse, but I promise you staff is working really hard uh, to just be able to maintain the grass. Uh, over the summer so we're getting into the season now where we can start to address some of the trees um, I'll get with Kim Hagler she's our environmental person here within the city and see if she has any ideas on replacing some trees or or things like that I'll get with her and take a ride around okay thank you Mr. Sims I don't have anything in reference to my uh, parks but like uh, I like to say uh or just that's a few questions about uh, have, has there been any questions about the skate park since it's been open to, to the public and like has there been any incidents or anything out there since the new system has been installed operation yeah so I, I will say there have there have been a couple incidents where I've heard of bikers being in there um, I've had to run a couple out myself um, so that is something I will say though however you know they're leaving trash around so we've kind of tweaked our maintenance staff a little bit and had our staff member that maintains the common areas around barber street george street and garden club uh she is now going into the park every morning and picking up trash trying to do those things but those are things that we kind of didn't anticipate happening but they're mm -hmm. also kids um, and it's nothing that's overwhelming unless you let it go so we you know once we realize that now staying on top of it it's a little bit here and there um, I, other than that, I haven't heard too much negative feedback. I don't know, you know, if anyone else has seen anything, let me know. Mm -hmm. I do know that I've seen it used a lot more now um, than it ever has been. And, you know, since I, I should say, shouldn't say ever, I've only been here since December. So in the 10 months here, um, it, it is now being used more. I've, I've driven by it quite a few times at night. I plan to go by there tonight and, and look at it on my way out of town. Um, but so it's just kind of hard to judge at this point, I think. You know, you, I see more kids there. I see mm, them, you great. know, using it. I've, I've seen skaters actively using it. I know there, there's a little bit of an you know, o older crowd that's been using it at night as well because I've gotten the phone calls. We had an issue with the lights and the timers to begin with, um, and, and they made the phone calls. We got the timer fixed for them. So I know it's being used, and I've, I've seen it myself that, it, you know, it's being used more than it was. Yes, because I, I drip me. My uh, my little girl, she's uh, she cheers for the football program there. So whenever she's there, I, I kind of overlook, and it is being used. Like uh, I don't know how heavily impacted it was prior to the fees being eliminated, but I know like uh, I just it's just something that crossed my mind is just by it not being anyone there, and they got a new system there. Yeah, I, I mean it's it's hard. You know, I can I can go back and pull the numbers. I mean, I, as I think we we discussed. In the last fiscal year, I haven't ran the final one for this year, but we brought in $1,600 for the whole year. You know, so that that's not a lot of vi skate park mm -hmm. visits. Yes. And they were having to pay. So I just feel like we're getting more out of it right now. Um, there, Like I said, there may be some issues that come up that we're just not hearing about quite yet. We have asked for police assistance with the bikes and, and uh, kind of, you know, just keeping an eye on it as they mm -hmm. patrol by. So, uh, and it's also a good thing we have the tackle football program out there right now, so they're keeping eyes on it. And, yes. you know, I haven't, I haven't gotten any negative feedback from them yet as well. So mm -hmm. it's something that's going to be a little bit of a learning curve as we go into this. We've got the new park signages up out there with the new rules. We've got those signs put in place. Um, and it just stresses, you know, what the requirements are. And like I said, I, I've ran a couple kids out with bikes. Uh, the two kids that I've ran out, they weren't riding their bikes. They were just sitting on them in there, and they gladly took them out. And I said, mm -hmm. you just can't have bikes in here. 
Mm -hmm. um, but I, ha I have heard that there's someone riding a bike in there. So we're going to stay on top of that. And <laughs> the camera is going to help us with that as well. I know I mentioned that, um, you know, the camera's going to be coming. We've got it in. We just got to get it installed and that'll help us because we can, we'll have 24 seven coverage live feed that I can access to be able to see what's really taking place. Mm -hmm. That'll give me a better opportunity to see what's happening down there on a consistently on a consistent basis. Again, I think it's a great idea, and it gives like so again now with the lights on out there, uh, it's a win-win thing. So I wasn't complaining about anything. I think it's real good because I know again while my daughter's cheering, that's going on, that's going to go on for a few more weeks. So it's just good to see that someone's out there utilizing it. And then the next area was how was the uh, Halloween activity over the weekend? What's, so what's we it? we did bat a little bit of rain. Um, we had some rain early in the morning, and uh, sorry I didn't give that give that update whenever I was going through my staff matters. Uh, I think we had in the range of uh, 25 participants, I believe was the number, and my, if history serves me, what I've heard is in the past it was more of 45, 50. Uh, so we were down about half. Um, we did try a couple, you know, new thing with, with providing pumpkins, and then we had stickers that they could decorate their pumpkin and do some things a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Um, we're going to, you know, start to tweak it now that I've got my feet wet with the Easter event and now the Halloween event on how things were done previously. Um, I'm going to start to tweak these events a little bit. So hopefully going forward, we're going to get the word out a little bit better. We're going to do a bit bigger push um, in, in the media segment of this and get it out to the newspapers and do some things a little bit differently, um, even have a few more activities and things to draw a crowd in and try maybe not to compete or, or go against some of the other local events that are taking place in the southern part of the county in different areas. Um, so I think we, we've got some pretty good ideas going forward and yeah. you'll, you'll see those in, in future events as well. I think this was the first year in a while that it rained and when it <laughs> rains like it did, that can kind of throw and wash away everything. Yeah. So it's kind of rain. Well, we were really lucky though, because on Saturday, it didn't rain. We got the whole contest done. As soon as everybody got their prizes and that, it poured and yeah. then everyone ran. So, but mm. for that whole time while we were judging and they were getting their pumpkins, it was fine. And it was just, it, it, it rained when it was over. So mm. it was Yeah, we had one cr group that was still on the hayride when it was pouring <laughs> rain, so they got soaking wet. But for the most part, as Ms. White mentioned, yeah. Um, we did we did make it through it rained a little bit prior to when, during setup mm -hmm. um, but I think that might have kept some people away but mm -hmm. you know we'll, we'll continue to, to improve things and, and push fun. to have a bigger attendance next year it was yeah. fun I just I knew I, I knew I wasn't gonna be able to be there due to a prior like, uh, entity but I, like uh, where I was there, it rained almost the whole entire time so that's why that's why I asked how did it go but other than that thanks to the city and staff for a, a great job because i know like you said during the, during the summertime with the uh, trying to maintain the parks with the with all that vegetation out there it can be hectic so i think you guys are doing a real good job and uh the workers and i know staff is as well so other than that that's my only areas yeah i agree with mr sims as far as uh it being a great idea that the skate park's now open like all the time for free that's great i've seen like a lot more usage of it since i've ever been here uh but as far as the bikes go most of the people i've seen there are on bikes at least today i was driving by and there were like 10 kids most of which were on bikes so it's good that they're getting usage out of the park finally and not having to pay to get in but since it is a small park it prevent, prevents a or presents a safety hazard with the small amount of space besides that at barber street uh I had a question about maybe drainage because you were talking about the grass earlier and I figured as part of that project, the football fields don't have as much of a problem, but with baseball it presents a problem when all the, the grass is really muddy and stuff because if it rains one day, it takes, I usually in my experience, at least like two days for the fields to be back to normal. And that presents like another opportunity for damage to the grass and the field itself. So if that could be looked into for the next meeting or the next project update, uh, that would be something that I think is important. Uh, besides that, my parks have all been looking great. They've been picked up pretty well. And even uh, <coughs> since I live by the George Street Park, I noticed before, a few months ago, there's always like debris everywhere. But that's been cleaned up, and the staff's doing a great job of maintaining all the parks now. And it, it, just, it looks great. So, Thank you. Mr. Uh, Benton, is there like, a, I know there's a bike rack already in place. So, um, the bike a bike rack for the, the uh skate park. skate park so is it i mean i haven't been there i mean i haven't been there physically on there but is it one that could encompass a large amount of bike i mean bicycles like maybe a, 
a, a rack that has stalls for 10 bicycles or enough that maybe that may deter the individuals from bringing the bicycle in there because I may, I know the, where it is located now, if it's not enough racks they'll form, maybe that could be why they're bringing it in or, yes, I don't know. I like to get yeah, riding them in there and then having someone, ha having a place to put the bicycles at while they're in there may not make a big difference at all. They are probably gonna ride them in there anyway. So I'm just saying if, it's, if it was enough bicycle racks outside, which it probably is, I haven't gone by there to see, but I'm just saying just maybe that may deter the bicycles from going inside. Yeah, I'll take a look in that. I'll, I'll look at the bike rack on the outside and, and see what we can do. <clears throat> We've had a couple internal discussions about it. Um, actually, I had one today that um, we, we, we discussed, you know, looking at turnstile to get in there to prevent the bikes from coming through and going one that was a little bit higher so they couldn't even lift over. But there's just an expense involved with that. And if we can somehow work through these, these little issues and, and prevent, prevent it from ha going any further, I think, you know, like I said, I think the camera is going to help us out quite a bit because then we can really zoom in and start to pinpoint who the kids are and we can make an, a concerted effort to find out what time they're attending the park and then start to really address and, and stay on top of those kids. And I think once you, if we go ahead and get it now while we're still in the beginning stages, I think we can kind of take care of the bikes within the park and, and let the kids start to self-police themselves because if they don't do it and they don't take care of what they have, then they're gonna lose it. And I think we got, need to get out there and as soon as we get the cameras and we can start to see who it is, we can start to bring it down and, and let the kids self-police themselves a little bit. To a certain so extent. if one of us were to be walking by or if Matt's there and he sees a kid on a bike in the park, it's, it's okay for him to go over and say, you, you know, the bikes aren't allowed in there? Or yeah, I mean, allowed. if you're comfortable doing that, that's completely up to you um, as a you know, resident. I mean, it clearly states on the signs within the park. Um, there's two signs now. There's one in the parking lot on the fence facing the park. Um, and then there's also one that they have to walk right by because they walk in in the entryway and the sign is facing them as they're walking in. They have to see the sign. Uh, they're probably not reading it, but it says no bikes are, no bikes are allowed. So that is something, if, if you don't feel safe, don't feel comfortable doing that, by all means call me. You all have my cell phone number, you can call me. Um, and and I, I'm not saying I, I'll be in, in within the city at that time to address it, but it's something that, like I said, once we get the camera in place, I think we can really do a much better job of managing this. Isn't there something, I'm just thinking, the entrance into it, you know, you put the posts so cars don't go through. Couldn't you put another set that can't get a bike through? He's talking about a turnstile. Mm -hmm. well, the pole, the pole or, be cheaper. I mean, just, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, so you but, couldn't get a well, bike through it. So our discussion on, on the poles and even a turnstile is, well, they're just going to lift the bike up and take it over top of it. Mm -hmm. just so that's where we were, top. you know, that we were just having that discussion mm -hmm. about, you know, we'll always look at it. Well, how can they get around it? Because they're going to figure out a way to get around it with the kids. Um, but I, th I think it's, let's just continue to see how things go. I don't think it's something that we really, mm -hmm. you know, have to, make make a large issue of right now we're still going to address it we're going to continue to push through it um but i think once we get the cameras in place then we can address it and, and stay on top of it is it feasible or within reason what would it take for the park to be more bike accessible because at the same time we don't want to alienate most of these kids who've already their parents have already bought them the bikes you know what i mean so granted i know the only park that i've seen was in fort pierce that's an enormous skate park that they use bikes in but is there anything within reason that would, like a small change that would make it easier for the kids to use the bikes in there? Two things. I think the footprint's just too small. And bikers and skateboarders don't, it, not, it just doesn't work in that small of an area. Um, my, my prior experience in Jupiter, we had a large skate park and we had bike specific nights, but we had staff there that, that, that oversaw it. Um, and there was never a time where we allowed skateboards and bikes in at the same time. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's just, you know, kids on skateboards and kids on bikes. The bikes are going higher. They're going faster. Um, you know, those things happen. I just think it's such a small footprint for a bike to be in that park. It just doesn't work um, mm -hmm. within that, the park that we have, unfortunately. Were you done? Oh, yeah. You were? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. I don't really have anything, but um, I know Lewis mentioned drainage at the baseball fields, and I know that the – fields one and two not that long ago everything was dug up and, and there was drainage worked on a few years ago and I think um, I know field three and I'm pretty sure one also 
had drainage work done on them. I don't know if they need to be re <coughs> redone, but. Yeah, we can look into it. I mean, those the way those fields were, were set up is they all drain to the sides and then they kind of have some drain, drainage on the side, on the sides in the swells. Um, so we can look into it. When, once you start really looking at drainage on an athletic field, it's a large undertaking because you basically have to start from scratch. You have to rip all the sod up. Well, that's um, what they did. And, and replace the drainage, do it a, a different way. You can do a rock base. You can do a couple of different ways to do, improve the draining drainage. But there's a big expense with it. Um, but we'll look at some, some smaller things, see if there's some, some specific areas um, that we can address it with. And I'll get with Lewis and, and uh, we can go that route and have that discussion as well. Yeah, you can look back in the records and see how long, how long ago it was done. I don't think it was that long. So um, I guess all that's left is the next meeting, and that's going to be November 25th. Okay, nobody has anything else. We're going to adjourn this meeting. See you next time. That's it. Yep.